Welcome to Nightline. I'm Pastor Benny. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home. Wherever you might be tonight, we are so glad to be with you. And let me tell you something. You're going to be blessed with our program tonight. You really, really are. It's historical in many ways, but oh, it, it, you'll see the depth of God's love in this as well. Our guest tonight is Miss Mabel Owens Clark from the Soapstone Baptist Church there in Pickens, South Carolina on Liberia Road. She's going to be talking to us about how that church started and she has been such an integral part in that. You don't want to go anywhere. You need to listen to this tonight, all right? Because, and not only that, you might want to go and visit one Sunday, or you might want to go and eat one of her great meals. We'll be talking about that a little while later on, so don't go anywhere because you might miss the chicken or the fish or the ribs or potato salad or something good like that. Also tonight in our music, my dear friend Michael Baz Machen. I met Michael many years ago. Mike, I think we met here on Nightline, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, he's, uh, he's been a staple in many, many ways. The Lord's been using him in a marvelous way, and uh, tonight uh, he's going to be playing four or five songs for us. Scott Daniels, who uh, many of you may have seen out there at the Barnyard Flea Market. Uh, Scott is uh, no stranger to folks uh, here that uh, watch our program, uh, but he's going to be on with uh, Michael Baz Machen a little bit later on in our program. But, you know, we just appreciate the fact that you've stopped and tuned in tonight. Really, we, we really are. And we want to tell you this, that prayer partners are standing by. Do you see that number right here? Ben, have, do I, I need to push it up or pull it down? Uh, there's the number, 864-244-1616, right there in the palm of my hand. It can be in the palm of your hand, too, if you go and dial it right this moment. 864-244-1616. Prayer partners are standing by, ready to take your prayer request, and you go to that phone. We've already gotten one in already. It's very urgent. Marcus, Marcus, we're praying for you. He's in a need of a miracle. Uh, he's been diagnosed with this HLL syndrome cancer and the doctors say that it doesn't look good, a fungus in the blood. But hey, you know what? We know the great physician. Now, we can be surrounded by physicians, but they take their ultimate orders from the great physician. He's still the healer. If Jesus Christ was the same yesterday, he is today, he will be tomorrow. So don't you dare forget that. Remember, prayer partners are standing by waiting for your call, all right? Right now, my friend and yours, Michael Basmation, save me, Jesus. Come on, Michael. Going to sin away from me. Take it anymore. It's getting too dark to talk to see. I need you now, never before. I wander so far away from you. And you are still there at my side. That I come back to you But I couldn't see that my foolish pride Jesus, I love you so Jesus, never let me go Jesus, I love you so Jesus, never let me go So many roads that lead away So many ways to lose your soul But then, Jesus, you touch my heart You show me that you don't let go Let me see. Be 
before it was too late. You lit up the path, the path for me, showing the way to heaven's gate. Jesus, I love you so. Jesus, never let me go. Jesus, I love you so. Jesus, never let me go. All right, we go. That's my boy, Michael Basmation. Uh, he's, he's from the same town that I'm from, the center of the universe, Duncan, South Carolina. You can't miss us. Don't blink, but you can't miss us when you come through the big city there. Thank you, Michael Basmation. He'll be back with us in just a little bit. And I want you tonight, I want to introduce to you my first guest in this hour. Her name is Ms. Mabel Owens Clark from the Soapstone Baptist Church. Would you welcome Miss Cl Mabel Owens Clark? I'm so glad to have you. Yes, we welcome pleasure. you here tonight. And we were talking, this is her first visit with us here at WGGS. Okay. So now, uh, Miss uh, Mabel, tell our folks just a tad bit about you, how you came to know the Lord. Would you do that, please? Because people are wanting to learn you. This won't, won't, this won't be your last time with us. So okay. tell us just a little bit, would you please? First, I'd like to say that I grew up in a Christian home. Amen. Two lovely parents that really loved the Lord, and they also taught all of their children mm -hmm. to love the Lord mm -hmm. and be respectful mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I became to know the Lord when I was got baptized at the age of 10. Uh, who, who are those folks I'm seeing right there? Our folks at home are seeing them on the left screen. Who would that be? Is that your mom and dad? On the, with the white on, on the left? On the left. Uh -huh. Okay. No, that's uh, Aunt Bessie and okay. uh, Uncle Chester Williams. Okay, and who's that on the right-hand side of the screen? On the right-hand side is my father, uh -huh. Mr. Christopher Owens, uh -huh. who lived to be 107. Wow. And my dear mother, Mrs. Lula McJunkins Owens, and she lived to be 104. My gracious, I'm going to rub your hand before you get away tonight because maybe you've got some of those genes that are passed on to me. I love that. And so, and so you grew up, how many children were there? How many it's siblings? It's eight. Hey, okay. Uh -huh. Were you the youngest, middle, oldest? Where did you fall? I closed in? the factory down. You okay? I understand that. That is. <laughs> I'm the great. last. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yes. And you. And uh, when? How old were you when you asked Jesus into your heart? Ten years old. Ten years old. My yes. goodness. And got baptized in a creek. My, isn't that something? Yes. Lord bless you. Well, let me tell you something about Miss uh, Mabel Owens Clark. She's uh, from Soapstone Baptist Church. And you know, about the only thing I could say is this. Tell us about Soapstone Baptist Church. People are saying, where is it? I, I've not heard of that. Help our people understand. Where is that? Because it is a great, it's a great church, okay? We're not talking about large numbers. Could be. Tell us about Soapstone. First, I would like to say uh, Reverend Chester Trower okay. is the pastor there at Soapstone Church. Okay. And uh, I'm under his ministry there. Okay. A wonderful pastor of a God fearing man. Mm -hmm. And we are just so blessed mm -hmm. to have him planted out there in the mountains at Soapstone. Great. It's great. And now the church is located 
in Pickens or Pumpkin? Where, where is it exactly? It's in Pickens County. Pickens County. But uh, they call it just near Pumpkin Town, so everybody can identify it more easily right. if you say Pumpkin Town. Right. But actually, the church is, ro is located on Labiri Road. Okay. And the, the, they got the name when they brought in the 600 free slaves. Okay. And the, my great great grandfather named it Liberia Road. They called it Lula Liberia. Now, did your grandfather? What part did he have in in the in the genesis of uh, Soapstone Baptist Church? Well, uh, he was, as I stated, he was among the 600 free slaves, mm -hmm. and he felt the need to have a, a church there. And he was a pastor. Uh huh. Okay. So he cut down some trees. And they started serious on the Brush Harbor. Mm -hmm. And as they planted some cotton and they all pulled, them, pulled their money together mm. and they built the original church and they named it Soapstone after the Soapstone. Uh, some people get the name kind of confused because right. I had someone that came to the church today <laughs> and they thought the, the rock made soap. <laughs> but Soapstone, that's the name of a rock. It's a right. big, large boulder uh -huh. and it's an outgrown crop of the soapstone rock that sits on the six acres of land there. Okay. So it's just, um, and also let me just tell you, yes. the Indians used this soapstone rock for their pottery. See, the Indians was the first on the land there. Okay. And that was right. ran off up into Cherokee. Okay. And then after that, they brought in the 600 free slaves. All right. Now and the slaves came in in the 1800s? In, late the, late, in the late 1800s. Late 1800s. That is okay. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Indians then moved uh, or run off mid 1800s before the Civil War or after. Do you do you recall? Well, they they was ran off at the beginning of okay. the 1800s up into Cherokee. Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's where. The, and so, if people come out there, they can see this rock, can they not? Oh yes, it's a whole outgrown feel of that rock. And just let me tell you, when you walk out on that that the uh, soapstone rocks that is adjacent to the church, uh -huh. it is picturesque. Wow. You can stand there and look into Table Rock, oh my. Caesar's Head. I mean, it, I call it God's little holy grounds. Amen. Amen. And, and you know, I know some of the crew went up there to see that. In, in, the, in the next segment, we're going to be looking at some of those pictures, some of that video that they took. And uh, uh, I'm fascinated because I have to confess, I did not mm -hmm. know about the church. I, I just did not. Uh, but I got my uh, show prep before I came uh, uh -huh. earlier last weekend. And, you know, I just was amazed at uh, how the church began. But I'm also amazed how the church continues. Yes, we know it's the blessing of Almighty God. Yes. But, folks, listen to this. The church continues because of this dear lady. Tell them what you do, what, what you're doing now. Well, I'll call it my ministry. I guess I've got to kind of go in reverse here for a minute. Go ahead, okay. please. Right ahead. Okay. My mom, before she... Uh, had asked me to find some means to keep the doors of the Soapstone Church open. Mm -hmm. And I kind of played with that idea and I started a fish fry. Okay. Because the membership had dwindled off and we needed funds to keep the doors open as she requested. Okay. So every third Saturday of the month, I host. I came up with the idea for somewhere calling it a fish fry. But let me just tell you, it's not just a fish fry. Tell us we more. We do fish, ribs, pulled pork, fried chicken, mm. and and mm. all I, I do all fresh vegetables. I don't do canned goods at all. And you're the you're the uh, the chef. I am the chef. So if if someone comes up there and they would eat their their meal there in the church, there, look look at that meal. Now, did you make that gorgeous plate of food right there? <laughs> I did. Ooh. Mercy. And you serve that now the third Saturday of every month. Every month. Wow. And this coming up Saturday, it uh -huh. will be, we, we'll open at 1130 right. and we will close at 5. This is June the 20th. And uh, uh, so you're a continual type of serving. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. But we'll be, on the, it'll be a drive through mm -hmm. and everyone is welcome to bring their lawn chairs and right. sit out on the grass and, right. and just suck up that beautiful view looking mm -hmm. into Table Rock and mm -hmm. all that fresh mm -hmm. air you just mm -hmm. taking in. You no, know, no pollution out there. No. Well, I want to know, what is your best dish? Now, I'm not putting you on the spot, but uh, what do you really enjoy cooking most? Well, I'm going to tell you, I was, uh, 
going to be featured in the Eating Well magazine, uh -huh. and they flew in from New York. And it was a lady that came in and did the testing. I had to do six dishes in front of her from start to beginning. Okay. And she says my tomato casserole is the biggest hit she ever seen. My she gracious. she travels all over the country, out uh -huh. of you know, and she had never ever tasted anything like it. But I enjoy cooking all foods, but I do not like to bake. My you ba don't bake. I, I just can't do that. I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. I enjoy it. But I enjoy, it, you know, making all my other dishes, my uh -huh. casseroles and um, pulled pork and my ribs, and they Ooh. fall off the bone. And, mm. I mean, Mercy. You, just, you just take it and just go with it. And now, and, and you can eat like a king, I think, for $12. No, $14. $14. Food has gone up, Pastor Ooh, Benny. Well, I... I, I <laughs> I know we we we're still going through the drive-through, and, so, <laughs> and so it's just hard to know. Fourteen dollars, you st folks still. I mean, what what a what a deal that yes. is. Yes, I mean all fresh food, and they can choose, you know, from the meats. They right. get one meat. They get three sides. They get a dessert. They get iced tea, lemonade. You can't even get that at McDonald's. No, ma'am, you can't. And so you really, I, I was reading in some info. Um, you would get up at, at maybe three or four in the morning and stay up and and, and do all the preparation. Yeah, I get there about four o'clock, between four and four thirty, the Ooh. day of the uh, wow. of the fish fry. Now, please tell me you have help. Yes, we have, have servers that come yeah. in on the Saturday to help serve and Good. get the meal on the hot bar. But you, but you basically you you cook it. You you. Oh it. oh yes, I mean I'm the chef. I do I do all the cooking, mm. except for we do I do have a fish fryer. His name is Charles Johnson. He comes in and fry the fish. Okay. We like to, I don't like to put the fish on the hot bar right. because you don't want fish to be soft no. and you want to have a, just a little crunch Right, you to do, it. you do. And, and what type of fish are we talking about? Oh, we're talking about flounder, first flounder. Mercy. Mercy. Yes. <laughs> are you listen Are you getting hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think the crew's getting a little hungry here. And those good old collard greens. <laughs> oh my gracious! Oh first my. cream corn. Oh my! Oh my! You're talking my wife's language. We, I, I'll need to bring her up there. You I got mean, to do that, I, Pastor Betty. You I'll, must. I, I must. I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, hold me to that because in Pickens County, and like I say, I can't make it this week, but probably in July I can because. Uh, uh, my wife is uh, Latin. She's Venezuelan, okay. Okay. and uh, she loves good old Southern cooking. Okay. She didn't have that growing up. Okay. And uh, and she's from Venezuela. Venezuela, that's correct. I had the opportunity to visit there. Did you really? Yes. Yeah, I lived there, and we lived there, and the missionary way back when. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Yeah. And so you know, it's a beautiful. It's a, it is beautiful. Yes. It, it it is beautiful. But now with that, with the fish fry going. Uh, do you have to pick just one meat, or can you eat whatever you desire? Well, you choose one meat. Okay. You choose your three sides. Okay. And then you get your uh, first corn muffin or a yeast roll to go with that, and then you choose a dessert. Walk on down the line and pick up that iced tea or mm, lemonade mm, 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 and mm. just get your choppers ready to go. My goodness. And just sit back and... How have, and enjoy. How have you not spoiled your family? I mean, just listen. I hadn't tasted it now, but just <laughs> listening uh, makes me hungry. I mean, it, it does. Now, you have, there are several things I've got here. There's a, uh, a book called Liberia, South Carolina by John Cogshaw. And um, uh, these are books that you can pick up, I'm sure, at Barnes & Noble or places like well, that. Well, they can purchase at the church for $30. Okay. And, you, and all the proceeds goes to the church. There's that book. And please understand, when you purchase that book, uh, you're not only going to find some great reading, and I've not read it, but you're going to be investing. You understand? You're not mm -hmm. buying a book. You're investing in the Lord's work in a church. Amen. So I want to encourage you when you do, stop by and 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 pick that up. Now, I, I ask this for our, our, on behalf of our viewers. Mm -hmm. Do you accept uh, debit cards, credit cards, or is it just strictly cash only? 
Could be either cash or checks. Cash or checks. You hear mm -hmm. that? So when you go up there, uh, don't think you're going to use your debit card <laughs> or visa. You either take cash or take your checkbook, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll gladly receive that. Look at that. Soapstone Baptist Church. Now, mm -hmm. Sunday school is at 1030 mm -hmm. and worship is at 1130. Every Sunday at 296 Liberia Road in Pickens, South Carolina. That number, 864-414-8470. That's the number of yourself or the pastor or the church. If I dial that number, who would I get on the other end? Mabel. Mabel. All right. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Give Mabel. They get to talk to the chef. Yeah, you get to. And, and just tell her you're looking for, you're coming. Why don't I take a busload? Why, Why not? not? Why let's not? do that. I mean, you know, let's go up there and this, this lady's heart is, she's serving the Lord. She's preserving her church, historical church, my friend. And my goodness. Yeah, with nine members, I mean, I want you to come out and support us. Sure. Y'all have nine members now. Nine members. Yeah. And do you have visitors on Sunday morning? or Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yes. okay. Wow. I, that, that, fabulous. I would love for you to bring a bus load on us Sunday once we... Uh, Go back once the uh, coronavirus yes. has ceased down. We may try to do that. Yeah. We really might. And uh, uh, you need to be part of that. And we're talking to Miss uh, Mabel Owens-Clark tonight. She's coming back in just a moment. But right now, Michael Basmation, he's going to sing Tell Him That You Love Him. Michael! <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to have a little fun with this song. It's going to take you way back to the 60s. So listen to the words. Here we go. Praise Him. Tell Him that you love Him, Jesus. Say His holy name forever, forever tonight. When I was a little child, Always said my prayers I will look to heaven above Feel the love he shares Even now he's in my soul and In my life to stay Praise him and love him every day Praise him, tell him that you love him Jesus, say his holy name forever Forever tonight. Do a little twist. Now it's time to kneel and pray. Praise you, my Lord. My life is yours for eternity. Now and forevermore. You gave your mind to get my soul when you died at Calvary. Thank you for giving me eternity. All right, here we go. Listen to that saxophone. Woo! Do the twist. Oh, you gotta love this kind of music. That's Rick Burnside on the drum. Woo! All right, here we go. Show us how to live a life that praises you reaching out to show the lost they need you too let our lives reflect your love in all we do and say showing we love you every day we praise you tell you that we love you jesus Say his holy name forever, forever tonight. Forever, forever tonight. Praise God. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Michael Bazmachian. and he'll be back in just a few minutes to continue singing this hour and into the next hour. You know, the, one, uh, the wonderful thing about talking with so, our guest tonight, uh, Miss Mabel Owens Clark, is the ministry that she's been called in. Her cooking not only preserves food, it, it preserves the, the great Soapstone Baptist Church and, and the lifestyle section of Pickens County uh, Courier. There, there are these words. Can, can we read that, uh, Ben? Can, can we see that? You see. Do not let these doors close. Are you listening, folks? Come on now. By your going up there, you're not only going to get a great meal. You're investing in the kingdom of God. Please see it. Please understand that that's what you're doing. I've got to tell you this. Prayer partners are standing by, but listen, we've got a salvation already tonight. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your mm. personal Lord and Savior, give us a call. Prayer partners are standing by and they're ready to share with you, pray with you, listen to you, share with you the plan of salvation. But we can't do it if you don't call us, all right? We're talking tonight to Miss uh, uh, Mabel Owens Clark. And I'm telling you, I've got so much wonderful stuff that she's going to let me take home and uh, the Southern Edge, a modern approach to Carolina living. She's, uh, she's in here, and there's a, a beautiful pictures of, uh, of the church in here. And uh, if you, you've heard of Charleston, I'm her younger sister, no, that we keep going Tempest. over here, Liberia. My, and in this, can we get just one more? Uh, I don't know that we have that picture being in the still store, but that picture of the church right there. Mm -hmm. You see that? The that church. was the original Soapstone Baptist Church. Yes. And in 1966, mm -hmm. uh, shamefully, I say this, uh, the Ku Klux Klan burned it down. Yes. And it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I, I wanted you to see and what great history we have. I, now, I do know this, uh, uh, Miss Mabel, that you, you brought in some pictures and or video. And uh, I thought that uh, we could show a little bit of that video. You stop it where you want. I want you to and tell us what we have just seen or what we're seeing. Uh, but it's going to be up to you to stop that video. Can we get ready with that little roll in, please? And when you want to stop it, say, just stop right there. What are we seeing there? Okay, you see in the sign that's in front of the Soapstone Baptist Church. It says Soapstone Baptist Church, and it gives the order of the service. Mm -hmm. And now that is the interest rate road driveway to God's little holy grounds, mm -hmm. the Soapstone Church. Now that is in the dining hall. That is the uh, hot bar. If you could just move it back a little bit again. I don't know if we can move it okay. back. Okay. Yes. And this is the dining hall um, where we have the fish fry. And also we are able to host weddings there, but we can't do it right now because of right. COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Now, what are we seeing right there now? Tell me what, what we're looking at. This is looking out over the outgrown crop of the soapstone grounds. Okay. Okay. This would be the property. This is the property, okay. the okay. six acres that All the right. church. What now, am I seeing? Tell our folks that. Hold it right there, folks. Uh, yes, just stop right there for a moment. Now, this is the Stopestone Boulder Rock. And as you can walk out on this rock, you can look right into, do you see the mountains mm -hmm. just in the, uh, in the rear there? Yes, ma'am. And you can walk out on that rock and look into Tabor Rock and Caesar's Head. Right now, it's showing Caesar's Head. Uh -huh. But to the left, it would be Tabor Rock. Uh -huh. But let me just tell you a little about the Soapstone Rock. You can take a small pebble, pick up another small pebble, uh -huh. and you can carve your name or into that rock because it's a soft rock. It's kind of remind you of a bar soap, like talic. Uh -huh. And you, know, you can carve the name. But the slaves did not have money to purchase headstones. Uh -huh. And they used that, so the soapstone rock to, and it would take another and carve the name on it. But mm -hmm. you must understand by it being so soft, and these going back to the late 1800s, mm -hmm. most of the names have just disappeared right, because right. it's such a soft type rock. And so, uh, henceforth, the name of the, the rock, Soapstone. Soapstone, that's it. And so, if I were to go there, I, I mean, uh, you could literally carve your initial you, into it. 
Yes, you can. Isn't that fascinating? Yes, it is. And and so um, you can, uh, if you go there, uh, that's just right outside the church or right outside the dining room. People would be invited after they've eaten to. Take oh, a when stroll. you drive up on the property, you you'll see the rock immediately. Okay. That that huge boulder. And let's go here. This is a slave cemetery. Tell us about that. Hold that picture okay. right there. Okay. I had the, the opportunity to uncover this perhaps about now, looking at about 14 or 15 years. Okay. Now, this cemetery goes back to the late 1800s, and it was all grown up with trees where you see now uh, where it's open stones yeah. there. Uh -huh. But it was, when I went there, it was nothing but trees all through there. It was just a forest. Mm -mm. But what, what I did... Um, we had, was having the church property surveyed because it was some timber that was being cut off the land and I wasn't sure right. if uh, they was on the church property and the surveyor came to my home and said, I have two things to tell you, we got good news and bad news. Oh my. And said that some of the church uh, timber has already been taken off the property. But he said, I came upon all these graves. And did you know they were there? No, but in my home, my parents used to talk about the uh, slave cemetery and uh -huh. talk about it, but they never t took us there because they always said it was too painful. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, I, so when I went there and I saw how it was grown up, I said, I have to do something. I toured with it for about two weeks, mm -hmm. and I wrote a letter out to various churches, and I said to them, I need you to come with bulldozers, chainsaws, any means so we can make a path in there. Right. And if you could come and help me just make a way in there, mm -hmm. I promise you, I'll make you the biggest lunch you ever had. Ooh. So at, I gave them the date to show up, but let me tell you, Pastor Benny, at 7.30, I had 35 peoples from Greenville, Pickens, all <laughs> over. I mean, everything from men's, children, and women's. Isn't that great? And we got to cutting bushes and working our way in. Now it's 12 o'clock and I'm supposed to feed them, but we still haven't gotten to the, to the graves yet. Right, right. So I said, well, I promise you lunch and it's ready. So we went over to the dining hall. We, I fed them and everything. And I made my little spiel and thanked them for coming. And I was just so sure that they were just going to, you know, get in the cars mm -hmm, and leave. Mm -hmm. And I asked them if they could uh, come back at another time. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, no, we're going to go back out there. We're at least going to see one grave before we leave here. My gracious. And so by 3 o'clock that afternoon, who was up front, start clapping their hands and everything. And we threw down the chainsaws and started running. And everybody just started walking through looking at those graves. Well, let me ask you now, with these graves that we're seeing, are there any names or dates that are legible on any of them? Perhaps about three okay. that's legible. Would you know, would you know uh, the, any of them, any of the dates of the, of the folks that are buried there, the slaves? I mean, anyone like in 1820 to 1880 or... No. Would, okay, okay. I, just, I didn't know because I know Cause that's they use so that, hard. That's so stone rock and the only one right. that's left is Rebel McGowns, but that was, you know, didn't right. reach all the way back to the late 1800s. Right, right, right. That one is much more newer right. in the in the Now, 19th. now that the graves have been uncovered, will this be perpetually cared for or will it be up to volunteers to come in and keep that uh, uh, cemetery? Because that, that, that's historical. I mean, it, it really is. And uh, somehow or another, uh, the state or, or the church, somehow that should be recognized. And uh, because I, I think that uh, the historicity of that is just too important to let it get covered up again. Yes, but it is being maintained because we have tourists that comes as far as Charleston and Beaufort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Charles, my husband, and I, we mm -hmm. pretty much make sure that it's maintained. Right. Because as, right. as I said earlier, we only have nine members and they are elder and... Right. Not that I'm not elder, but <laughs> <laughs> they're a little bit more than you're, I am. You're young, bless your heart. I'm just, and so uh, when people come, they, they, they would have the freedom just to peruse, uh, peruse all through there, just looking. Yes, and, and I have a, a, it's a kiosk mm -hmm. at the entrance of the Slave Cemetery. Uh -huh. If I happen not to be around the church, they can al always read the uh, history on the kiosk. Right. And it's, the gate is open where they can walk in. Right. 
and you know visit with mm -hmm. those slaves because mm -hmm. we have to understand oh uh, i call this slave cemetery my little baby yes. because pastor benny you and i will not die the way those no. slaves did I, I mean either from hungry mothers that had babies in the field with no doctor so mm. i felt so compelled that mm. I had to give them some dignity Absolutely. that they never had an opportunity mm. to have. God bless you. So I had to step out on faith, and we got the road got a road cut, cut in there, the cul de sac. Right. We have nice boulders, nice blooming flowers, mm -hmm. and I just give God all Amen. the praises. Amen. For Amen. just just being an instrument in my life Amen. to get it done. You can be part of that. You're going to not only have a great meal. Uh, you can invest in the kingdom of God at the mm -hmm. Soapstone Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason in the world why some folks who are listening tonight, maybe some pastors, that you couldn't be part to go up there and say, I'm going to bring some of my Baptist men and women. Mm -hmm. and what can we do? You Amen. call uh, that number, 864-414-8470. That is uh, Ms. Mabel's number. Tell her who you are, that you saw her on TV 16, and you'd like to come up there. And what can you do? What, what help do you need? Maybe it's Reiki. Maybe it's shoveling. Mm -hmm. or, or eating. Yeah, don't forget, she, she's the cook. Uh, and she'll take good, good care of you. Uh, you I find plenty of work for them if they show up. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I bet you would. I could just tell you could do that as well. So... Uh, in the days to come, you've said that the church members, only nine members, mm -hmm. that needs to be maintained. And uh, uh, somehow, you know, the church would be glad to accept new members in there, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, yes. And uh, now, when, if people need to be baptized, would you all go down to the creek close No, by? we have a baptismary now. We Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, we do. Now, now, there's the inside of your church today. Yes, that is the uh, pulpit Beautiful. there. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. See the baptistry back yes. there? And now, do you sing? Do I sing? Mm -hmm. I don't think I will to try that. <laughs> I, I bet you could sing. If you can cook, you can sing. I'm convinced of that. But so quaint, so beautiful. Look at that, folks. Those of you watching television at home, that is just beautiful. Beautiful stained glass windows. Yes. And uh, and now you, there is a mortgage on that building. You say a mortgage is on the dining hall. Okay. But All right. the but my mother and dad sow vegetables to mm. build the church back that's standing there now. Uh -huh. and, and it was burned in 1966, and they had it open in 1967. God bless you. Just, just going on Saturdays, peddling vegetables, mm -hmm. and she had a little, little notebook with her, uh -huh. and she would ask her little customers too, says, my church been burned. Can you just give me a few dollars to buy some cinder blocks? Sure, sure. Absolutely. And, and, and the pastor was Reverend William at that time. Okay. And he knew how to uh, do the cement with the block. So how many blocks that she would bring, he would come on, a, they would go, my mom and dad would go and purchase those on mm -hmm. a Monday, mm -hmm. and the pastor would come on a Tuesday. So he kept coming every Tuesday for that whole year, yeah. and the church was the church that you see now. Mm. Uh, unbelievable. You know, we're uh, talking with Miss uh, Mabel Owens Clark. We're talking about Liberia, South Carolina, Soapstone Baptist Church up there. And uh, you've been invited. You are invited. We need, I've not been, as I told you, but I'm going to go. I, I, that I'm going to do. Now, I want to remind you, please, that uh, prayer partners are standing by. You see the number right there on your screen, 864-244-1616. Give them a call. Would you do that, please? Let them know uh, that uh, who you are. We want to pray for you. We, we, we want to pray with you. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we have folks who are ready to pray a sinner's prayer with you and you can begin again fresh and new. We'll be talking more and acknowledging many of these prayer concerns that have come in. But right now, Michael Basmachian singing for us again, Revelation Song. Michael! Listen to the words. You guys know the words out there. Sing along with me. such a beautiful song. Who 
TV 16 tonight and give Jesus your heart. He loves you more than you'll ever know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Michael Baz Machen, and thank you for coming back. Aren't you intrigued with our program tonight? Uh, what a guest uh, we have, Miss Mabel Owens Clark. And uh, Miss Mabel, we were talking uh, about the school before we came on air, and about your mama's deathbed. Tell yeah. us about those two things. First, let's talk about the school for a moment. Okay, uh, the school there is the one was a one room school. We had one teacher, and she taught all classes. And I went to that school up until the fifth grade. And there's the school right there. Yes. And it's still standing. It's still standing. Are, are, is that open for tours? I mean, not at, not at this time. Okay. We got to do some renovation on the inside. Okay. But um, my plan is to make it into maybe like a little museum and restore it with some African artifacts. Uh huh. Yes. And uh, kind of restore it back to a school. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And you know. I've got to say this before we talk about Mama's deathbed. Somewhere in my spirit, there's someone out there who's listening, and uh, you, uh, your checkbook is very, very large, and you could take a check right now and write thirty, fifty thousand dollar check to Soapstone Baptist Church, and in doing that, not only would you get that debt paid, you would begin the restoration of that schoolhouse. Folks, this is rich here history. A, a spiritual depth of history that uh, uh, is not found just anywhere. And I, I can't help but I feel that there's someone listening, that you could do something. You, you know you could. I, I don't know who you are, but I know you could. Wouldn't you like to invest in this part of history and in the corner part of our great state? Just take it to the Lord in prayer. I, I just felt led to say that. Now, we're talking about not just the school, but your mama's deathbed. Tell us what uh, uh, about that experience, if you would. Well, my mother had such a love for Soapstone Church. And my mother lived to be, as I stated earlier, she lived to be 104 years old. And she called me to her bedside, and by her, became, she became paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And usually when she called me, she wants something from the kitchen. And she says, no, I need two favors. And she put two fingers up in the air. Okay. And she said that I'm going home to sleep in Jesus' arms. Woo! Mercy. And I want you to do two things. Go to Greenville, get your oldest brother, mm -hmm. and bring him home to the family house and make it handicapped accessible for him because mm -hmm. he's handicapped and he's paralyzed. Okay. And, but he did use the little scooter. And she asked me for my hand and squeezed and said, will you do that? She said, now, number two, do not let the doors of Soapstone Church close. You mm. find some means to keep mm. that church alive mm. and carry out your great-great-grandfather legacy. Mm. And so that is why I do the fish fry. That is why I strive to keep those doors open there. Mm. And what is hanging out there now is the mortgage that we have left on the church there okay. for the dining hall. Right. And we have to get that paid off by December okay. because that's when maturity ends on that. And I know that someone is, like you said, is out there listening. Yes. And I know the whole state of South Carolina loves history. Yes. yes. And we, we all can make an impact in getting that done. So I am challenging yes. the state of South Carolina to come out and let's mm -hmm. come together mm -hmm. as one mm -hmm. and get this done. Mm -hmm. I'm on fire. Yes, you I are. I cannot <laughs> let to see that a, a developer come in there no, 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 and no. push the church over or do anything because right now I'm in the process of having that history preserved right. and also to get a marker for the church, right, which it right. deserves. Has has that part, uh, has has your property been noted as a historical 
site in South Carolina? Has it been recognized yet as a historical site? In South Carolina, but it needs to be noted as a national sure. historical site. Absolutely, s yes. And, uh, and I, I, I implore you to do whatever you must do because it, it's wonderful, wonderful, literally, uh, what you've been doing. Uh, I, when I picked up some of my uh, pre-show preparation, I have, a, I have a paper here that says, one woman is using food as a tool to preserve history. Mm -hmm. And yes. I thought, when I read that, I got this, I thought, my gracious, I, I can't wait to meet this <laughs> dear lady. And uh, you get right to the stomach, and, <laughs> and then you get to the heart, and then you get to the pocketbook. I mean, that, I think it is wonderful. And so right now, if, if I were to ask Ms. Mabel, what, what is your greatest need? Uh, and uh, we know you have a great the financial need. We understand that, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, outside of that, because I just feel someone or somebody's is going to help you get that taken care of. Beyond that, what would be the second greatest need? I would like to see that schoolhouse restored inside before I reach 80. <laughs> before? Wait a minute. <clears throat> That'd be another 20 years. <laughs> I mean, you, you want to see the schoolhouse restored. Yes. You go in there. I know you have been in there. Yes. And, and well, I went to school there. Up until the fifth grade, Nick, the government closed it. Okay, so uh, you went to school there. When you go back in, I can only imagine how you're transported back. Yes. And, 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 and the memories. The memories. That flood your soul. Yes. And it was your great-grandfather mm -hmm. who really uh, discovered the soapstone and really was fundamental in getting this church together. Yes. And do you remember uh, how many members did they have? Was it a, a, a larger congregation, 25 or 50 million members at one time or larger? Uh, what, what do you remember about the church? Well, before my time, it was like 600, you know, people that attended that church. and they, But that was outside, right, you right. know. But what I really remember is the revival meetings. Watch it now. Mm. That I, it was so excited to to go to every you know it'd be going on for a week. Yes. yes. And then uh, we'd have homecoming outside, eating underneath the trees. Mm. And mm. and you know what was interesting? They had a a man that used to come with. Uh, he would take our pictures. You know, uh, you, you know, my parents had to pay mm -hmm. for it. But he would be sitting in in this little black cloth like thing, and you go in there, and and he it, the the camera was so old now that my mind is running back. Right. And he would snap the pictures, and about two hours, you go back, and there's the picture. So that was an excitement for us. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm... And I guess too, um, just last week, I guess about two weeks now. I had the opportunity to go down to the old spring, mm -hmm. and um, my husband was instrumental in wanting to cut a path and make a little trail so when people come. And we used to go down there to get water to bring back up for the teacher to cook our meal. So I had the experience to go down there mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. look at the wild flowers that was mm -hmm. growing there mm -hmm. and how I used to pluck those. I mean, it's just so much beauty there. I, I, I just can't just... It's just not enough time to tell it all. No, and and you know, and, and people are welcome when they come to take to take pictures or, or whatever. Oh yes. I mean, uh, yes. they would be very very welcome to the to do that. Um, and uh, there's so many folks out there. I know who uh, I know you're out there, and we could. Do you realize the investment that you'd be making? Yeah. You, know, you you have been such a sweet dear lovely guest and all the crew members uh, hmm. were telling me uh, I was here earlier today about the, their experience with you going down to Soapstone Baptist <laughs> Church and uh, I, I was so excited to meet you because first of all it's my honor and joy but more than that my high admiration for you because uh, you want to keep something very much alive mm. we're talking Soapstone Baptist Church is the bride of Christ yes and yes. we can't let that uh, be toppled. We can't let that disappear. No. I mean, this is the bride we're talking about. Yes. And some of you are out there, you could help us. You could help her do that. 
And so we put our information up there, uh, Soapstone Baptist Church, 296 Liberia Road in Pickens. You see the zip, 29671. Or you can give Miss Mabel a call at 864-414-8470. And uh, you can see her Gmail account there. Uh, you can also see the Facebook account. Why don't you give this sweet lady a call, would you? Many of you called here tonight, and uh, we're praying for you. Grady uh, Thaxton, praying for you, man. We, we love you, man, and uh, we're praying for any health problems that you may be facing. Mm -hmm. People have been calling in. You've had back trouble. Prayer for healing, prayer for healing. Uh, pray for uh, uh, someone's health, Rose's health. Um, praying for Gene. We're praying for so many who've called in today. One has given his heart to the Lord Jesus. Miss Mabel and I are going to join hands. We're going to put our hands right here, and I'm going to pray right now for these who've called in. Lord, collectively I bring before you every need. Lord, you know every single need on this mm. paper. If you pay attention to every sparrow that falls to the ground, I know you pay attention to me and to these who've called in. So whatever their need... Be the mighty God, the healing God that yes, we know Jesus. you to be. Please, because Lord. Jesus Christ is indeed the same. Yes. Yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. And so before you, we bring these collectively, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. In Jesus' name, Jesus we, pray. name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. I want to tell you something. You have been such a lovely, delightful guest. Love you, dear lady. We'll Thank look you. forward to having you back. Thank you. Thank you for blessing Th our hearts. Thank heart. you so much. Thank you. And I hope you've been blessed. We'll be back on the other side of 9 o'clock in a couple of minutes. We're not going anywhere. I hope you don't. And uh, thank you. Give Miss Maples a call. Would you please call us here at the prayer line? We're standing by. I'm Pastor Benny. I'll see you on the other side of 9 o'clock.